Коллеги, и снова добрый день. Я рада всем Hello, dear colleagues. I am glad to welcome you at the second block of our topics of our program dedicated to the application of AI to the internal needs of companies and breakthrough solutions for their clients. An interesting fact, according to a global survey by McKinsey, 57% of top managers said that, that ESG practice provides additional value to their stakeholders and 83% said that it will bring more benefit in the next five years. This session we will discuss in what way ESG generates value. We will provide examples when environmental, social and governance criteria become more and more important. And I would like to give the floor to the host Irina Tikhonova from RBK channel. We start our panel discussion on AI and ESG business solutions. Hello, dear colleagues, dear audience, my name is Irina Tikhonova, I am from RBK channel and I'm glad to open our panel discussion which is called Artificial Intelligence and ESG Business Solutions. Artificial Intelligence is a permitting technology for broad range of different solutions. It can be used to monitor the quality of our products, to monitor systems, to control personnel in order to comply and avoid discrimination. ESG is a new trend for Russian business, let's be frank, but the business is ready to support this trend. For example, 80% of the companies which were surveyed by Deloitte in September said that they've put forward ESG forwards to decrease gas emissions. For example, NLMAK, they have ecological and climate initiatives, or Norneco, which issued the first carbon neutral nickel this June, and by the end of this year they plan to provide 10,000 tons of this product. But it's not only about industry and heavy industry. For example, Sber announced their plans to increase the ESG criteria in their activity by 2030. Last year, paper consumptions, because of the turnover to the electronic document management, helped to decrease by 3.7 million kilograms, more than 3 million credit cards were recycled. We can continue the examples, but still we would like to specify and concentrate and focus on technologies, how AI can improve business strategy for these kind of global strategies, and at the same time to help business stay afloat. I would like to introduce our speakers who will be on our panel discussion. Daniel Zhou, President Huawei in Eurasia. Daniel is re responsible for business strategy of Eurasian Embassy. He works on the implementation of 5G technology and artificial intelligence. Daniel has helped a lot of companies on their way to technological and digital transformation, and he will help us. Ralph Halpter, President for Microsoft in Europe, Middle East and Africa. Ralph has 11,000 employees under him, more than 30 companies providing sales in 128 countries. Having more than 25 years of experience in the technological sector and different geographical areas, Ralph wants to improve the role of technology, to improve its competitiveness, to support local economic growth and improve quality life of common citizens. Ralph considers artificial intelligence as a key factor for innovations in business and society, and he believes that artificial intelligence can solve serious social problems, transform not only technological problems but also traditional ones. And it will be very important to discuss artificial intelligence here and now, specifically in this kind of approach. Andor Kosic, another speaker, director manager 
for Boston Consulting Group, key expert for energy sector. Anton works from 2011 in BCG. He has quite a lot of large-scale experience for production, for energy generation, for renewable energy, and so on. Big business transformation is the focus of Anton's work. ESG, AI, they are very important in the energy sector now. I'm sure that BCG experience is very important and will be applicable in other areas. Cognitive pilots, Director General Olga Uskova is the last but not least speaker. She has created an artificial intelligence as autopilot, which will be used in agricultural equipment. In St. Petersburg, this will be the real tractor which will use this self-driving capabilities. And we will have self-driving tractors even faster than self-driving cars. But before we start our discussion, I would like to have a survey among the audience of the people who watch us online. You can scan this QR code and go to the survey link. The question is as follows. What's your opinion? What is the main problem when implementing AI in business? In business in general or in Russian business? Possible, possible options. Corporate culture immaturity, difficulty of business task definition, lack of skilled talent, missing or poor quality data, or problems with technical infrastructure. Please vote, use the QR code you can see on the screen right now. We will have the results a little bit later and we will compare it with the results of the international survey of almost 1500 companies from different areas. But while our audience is voting, let us start our discussion. Anton, let us start with you. BCG a year ago started with a net zero strategy, which means by 2030 the company will attempt to reach carbon neutrality and then go positive, so get more CO2 from atmosphere than to emiss. Moreover, BCG works with Green Ventures, a team which should support corporations which want to solve their, B their ECG problems. And the key factor here is for artificial intelligence. You have studies which show that the general application of artificial intelligence can significantly decrease CO2 emissions and create a possible way to cut expenses to have additional benefits for 1.3 to 1.6 trillion dollars by 2030. Anton, please give us a few details why the role of artificial intelligence is so important in BCG. What are the specific methods which you use and your clients? Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Thank you very much for the chance to participate in today's discussion. Troy, I would like to start with the climate agenda, what it means to us as a global consultancy. Well, first and foremost, the goals that we set are not up to date. We are planning to reinforce them, to be more ambitious about them. So, if before we talked about decreasing by one third of our carbon footprint by 2025, today we are talking about 50% cut. That's a completely different story. And of course, the key focus, as always, is creating value for business and for the society in the broader sense of the word. But first and foremost, it is 
important for us as of a company that is creating value both to our clients and our employees. And I believe that the role of artificial intelligence is immense here. We may move on to the discussion of what impact AI has on different industries and sectors of economy. We see the agenda has changed. Before we talked about global climate and its impact, whether it will have a great impact. Today, the focus of discussion has changed. We talk about the value of the strategy for the sustainability and resilience of our business models. We know that today COP26 conference is underway, we're a partner of COP26, by the way, and the trends that are discussed there are important for the whole world. But what do we see, judging by... Thank you. Currently, our company is extremely preoccupied with carbon emission, emissions, but it's not only about uh, changes in reporting, but also about managing data and managing these effects. Only 10 to 11 percent of companies have decreased their their emissions in accordance with their ambitions previously stated. And we see that as that the measurement parameter is an extremely important factor here. As you can see on the slide, 85% of respondents do not disclose a carbon footprint data. Some of them even say they cannot measure it. Some of them say the measurement is not accurate, not accurate enough, at least. And the level of automation of the measurement, if we talk about that, we see that companies are using basic instruments such as Excel files, for example, and uh, have difficulty tracing the results. Well, talking to clients, we asked, what do you actually lack to move on to the next level? And uh, they noted that the most important factor is automated reporting, automated calculation of emissions. And naturally, artificial intelligence is a key factor at play here. It may help to optimize all the processes and come up with precise, accurate results. This will help us to, in the future, manage emissions. Artificial intelligence, digitalization, all these things require a coordinated approach at different levels. We not only talk about reporting and measuring, but also about analyzing great amounts of data that come from field services. These are tens of thousands of sensors and the information that they transfer, it needs to be analyzed and interpreted. So we get objective data. And this data helps us manage in, an, in a quick way all the necessary processes. If we take a look at the market, we see that there are a lot of players with their own solutions. However, there is no holistic approach. There is no one single solution that could be a panacea. However, we have other units that deal with artificial intelligence development and adapting artificial intelligence to climate change. For instance, we have a BCG CO2 AI solution that actually ensures transparency of 
CO2 emissions for industrial enterprises and provides emission reduction mechanism, mechanisms. Using a holistic approach, it's both customized and holistic at the same time. And it features four main modules. What does it help us do? Not only visualize emissions, but also to simulate. So one of the features is simulation modeling. They are modeling the impact of initiatives on emission volumes. This helps analyze data and trace the profiles that are shaped within this data. It may be considered as, as an operational instrument that the company is already using and is benefiting from it naturally. If we talk about companies of oil and gas companies, for example, or other natural resources companies, Using this instrument will help them increase efficiency of their processes thanks to visualization and simulation. This will bring more transparency, 5% more transparency to be exact. And a short, small picture here with a dashboard. Here you can see the functionality of our solution. You see the holistic approach. There are a lot of vendors integrated in a single strategy to manage CO2 emissions. So this is an artificial intelligence instrument that is ensuring transparency and manageability of CO2 emissions, of greenhouse gas emissions altogether. And uh, as you can see, there is a distinction between scope 1, scope 2, and scope 3 emissions. Talking about the future, it's important to note that most of the companies of heavy industries that we have talked to in the last half of the year, they are really serious about managing emissions, about reinventing their business models. And the instruments of artificial intelligence are one of the key instruments to reach their goals. Anton, thank you very much for such an insightful answer. But just a small question to clarify some things. The instruments related to artificial intelligence help to see ESG practices as not only a problem, but also as a profit, not potential one, but the current profit even. Well, actually, if we take a look at emissions of industrial enterprises, they are connected to energy and energy efficiency. So instruments that analyze big data and the instruments of artificial intelligence help to increase energy efficiency but these increases are economics related. So it's not only about technology, the economic pattern is enshrined here. And actually, it's a complete shift of paradigm. If we take any industrial unit at the lowest level, people think about technology. These are engineers who are thinking about engineering issues. They develop solutions and uh, think in engineering terms. However, we think both in technological and economic terms. So reinventing your business model will help you reinvent your CO2 emissions and the profits. That's important. But speaking of profits, I believe this is a key focus for many businesses, including Russian businesses and Russian businesses believe ESG is a burden. So PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, may carried out a research commissioned by Microsoft, and here's what they found. 
Using artificial intelligence may generate additional 5.2 trillion dollars by 2030, which is 4.4 percent more compared with the standard approach. Microsoft is actively engaged in providing AI services for its clients. So, Ralph, will you tell us a few words about the, your cases of applying AI technology for your clients and what's the effect both in terms of reaching SDGs and economic economics? Super. Irina, uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be a panelist. Uh, thanks for kind of being here with us. Spare. Um, thanks for the opportunity. I'm very impressed on the setup here and you have a track record of running fantastic uh, events. And so last year's base and, and two year today here is fantastic. Um, myself, I actually have had the chance last week to be at COP26. And so just on that basis, understanding that this is not only about governments regulating, it is really about uh, society being there and, and asking for commercial companies and governments come forward with solutions to have impact and uh, focus on the climate change challenges we have and bring solutions to play is uh, super visible. So it is moving to be a real discussion uh, between government leaders, but also commercial leaders. And commercial leaders will need and uh, to take and tackle the, the, the challenge, but also we commercially need to make that sound and, and kind of connect the dots there and see the opportunity. Um, you may have seen um, that I think 450 uh, banks in, as an industry committed 130 trillion investments in that context of um, attacking the challenge of climate changes. And so it is very clear that we have um, a leadership a commitment and a commercial backing on going after a problem. And we see also uh, companies reacting different. So the ESG uh, trade funds have with 120 billion doubled in 2020. You have seen as an example, also Bank of America showing their ESG investments is outperforming the rest of their markets by five to 10% in Europe and the US. So there's demand and uh, commitment as well. And I think it is clear, that was also my personal impression when I've been last week in, in Glasgow, that this is not anymore about uh, uh, litmus statements and kind of uh, trying to uh, behave appropriate. This is an understood urgency of uh, leaders uh, taking action and really have impact. And so ESG is the broad umbrella where the, the sustainability action is just a leading indica indicator into these different uh, activities. Now, um, it's also clear that uh, the overall engagement, and this is back to your question, Arena, is it a commercial sound uh, engagement, is a broad discussion. So brands today cannot afford anymore to be not engaged. Um, they will lose customers. Uh, companies cannot afford to engage anymore. They will actually lose employees. And so it is about taking uh, it serious. And then for us here from a technology uh, sector perspective, it is uh, the moment of differentiating and bringing to, to play the opportunities uh, of technology to run different. And that's the reason why I think we have today the discussion about AI and the impact of AI in this space. I think Anton did a nice job in laying out the need and the context of data. And uh, it is actually a simple fact of truth. What you can't measure, you can't attack. And that's more than true in, in the context of sustainability, which is the reason why we have for the financial industry explicitly kind of uh, made clear, clear that we have a dedicated cloud technology to be uh, for financial companies, a platform of collecting data. And we have announced two weeks ago, a platform uh, for sustainability in the cloud where we actually give companies access uh, to record um, data, uh, to reassess data, and then uh, to reduce uh, the footprint. And so there's clear technology play in, in the spirit, in the context of sustainability in market. And as you said, it's about data and then using AI to complement the data. It's about measuring and br bringing insights forward. And that brings me to a couple of examples I thought just sharing here for the discussion because that makes it lively. So with NatWest in the UK, 
we have actually a, a joint business model on basis of AI where they understand carbon footprints of their customers. So they, they offer a platform to consult their customers on their carbon footprint and uh, with that one, uh, build consultative and data-driven services uh, to help their customers as a bank. With RSCI, we have a company who is building a platform to actually bring for their solutions a data package together where they invest and how they invest so that they have for their organization the right technology stack to run. Now we also see that BNI Red Mellon uh, went with us to build products and give these products uh, capabilities to be uh, specific in how they invest on their funds uh, with their companies. And then to close off, uh, let me take Rabobank. Rabobank is actually offering for their farmers uh, a way to measure their CO2 footprint. And so we see that one being more and more of interest because farmers have actually a pretty substantial role and capability to reduce the carbon footprint. And interestingly enough, they will go and sell, uh, be able to sell the benefits they're producing by being carbon negative and give, give that one as an asset in, in their uh, market and in the ecosystem to other companies who need to offset their footprint. And this is all done in the context of Rabobank being, so to say, a broker and a helper for these businesses at scale, which is the farming business. And then last not least, uh, I take the example of an Italian state, a state um, a startup, which is Flowey, which they have also a, a, an app for millenniums uh, to really help them and coach them on their personal usage and their personal impact on their footprint, including their financial investments on what it has in terms of uh, carbon impact and, and footprint on, on living. And so I just wanted to set the scene A being reconfirming that I think the commercial context is now understood. Leaders um, are in motion and acting. The platform to make it happen is all on the basis of data collection. And that's where we invested heavily as Microsoft to have these platforms collecting across all entities and all organizations this data. And then wanted to give you very, very specific examples of which we have right now in the market on how we use data and AI technology to build new ecosystems and new businesses and experiences. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Haupter. I would like to ask a specifying question. You spoke about services for your users, for customers, which makes it possible for them to get into the ESG agenda. But in Microsoft, in your companies, in your company, how do you try to implement this ESG strategy? Just a quick example. No, you're fantastic. Um, obviously, we ourselves have net zero by 2030 as a target. We have said by 2050, we actually will have taken out carbon uh, all to the, the amount which we have produced till then. So we will be total balance net negative by 2050. And give you one example on, on how we do that and actually how we help our customers. Think about cloud as a technology. Um, cloud computing today is most probably uh, using 4% of uh, global electricity. We have committed that our cloud data centers are carbon neutral. And so all customers who are using that technology will be able to reduce their carbon footprint by just moving to the cloud by more than 90%. We um, build a new campus as we speak. So we do everything to actually offset carbon in their production by using uh, products like cement, steel, which is done in a very different way and just reduce carbon footprint right there and through the technology. So there are very, very tangible uh, examples in our company. Our employees are luckily very, very engaged and interested and bring up ideas and we have space for them to contribute in, in that setup. And also we have very unique and specific uh, kind of ways to make our customers right here be part of our scope three commitment and be part of their own agenda for carbon reduction. Mr. Haupter, thank you so much and thank you for mentioning agriculture. It's a very important ESG, agriculture, farming, AI is a very important topic. Olga will speak about a bit later. Now we have a broader outlook on technologies. Let us now give the floor to Daniel Joe. Daniel, within the global activity of your corporation, what's your outlook on the relevance of AI for ESG tasks for China, maybe for other Southeast 
Asian countries. I know that Huawei provides a lot of solutions for ESG. For example, you have smart energy systems with net zero. These are different technologies, but these apply for ESG. What are the most popular solutions in the world? What are forecasts? Which are the rising stars which will become the most relevant? And what are the prospects here in Russia? Thank you. Firstly, very glad to have a chance and opportunity here to share some of uh, our opinions. I think you continuously ask the five questions, so I try to sort it and answer it uh, in my way. Um, firstly, I think uh, there's two topics. One is uh, AI and uh, sixth thing ESG. Um, this is a very good idea. I mean, put these two things are together. Um, let me firstly share some of the trends in China or uh, Southeast Asia countries. According to the IDC report, uh, recently China's due the largest investment uh, of the AI technology uh, globally. And even under the pandemic, we see last year uh, China in, whole, in, in the whole China, there's a, about a 55% uh, investment more compared with last year into the computing power. Why I say that? Because I see there's a uh, one very in interesting trend compared with let's discuss about AI uh, five year, or ten years ago. So back to five to eight years ago, um, the AI is more in design or dedicated purpose to, for certain organization or for certain big topics. However, we see AI today is became more um, perverting and more inclusive globally, especially in China. Uh, why I say that? Among all this investment last year in China, and in China right now there's about 20 cities. They are building their city-owned AI centers, AI computing centers. And the, the whole government, under whole government guidance, they're trying to make the AI technology more feasible, more accessible more easy to access for the normal citizen and uh, enterprises. This is, uh, this is a very big change. Um, I also can share a couple of good examples where Huawei being involved uh, for last uh, few years time. Um, I think it was the uh, end of 2019, uh, together with uh, Shenzhen International Airport, we delivered uh, the smart airport for Shenzhen Airport. We know Shenzhen Airport is uh, probably top three, I guess top three or four airports in China. Every year they have the total passenger turnover about uh, close to 50 million people. Uh, for that airport, under this smart airport project, there's a sub subdivision uh, topic called the uh, intelligent allocation system, where to help the airport to allocate all the airplanes to different gates. Every day there's more than 1,000 air, airplane um, landed in the Shenzhen airport. In a manual way, people, the, the airport in the past, in the history, they spent uh, probably four hours to sorting this whole processing. Uh, but with this intelligent allocation system, the whole processing reduced to one minute. And more importantly, you know, Shenzhen, the, air, the, the weather condition was quite tough in the summer. There's a lot of the storm and raining, uh, it, it's unpredictable. However, the new AI system can refresh, really refresh the, the, the whole schedule of the, uh, the, the uh, air st airplane standard in every 10 minutes. So original design for this, uh, the AI design for this system is to build a smart airport to provide a better uh, the customer experience. However, at the same time, what we found is uh, it saves 24,000 shuttle bus transfer between the gates and airplane. 24,000 shuttle bus transfer between. So this is a great import, which we didn't expect when we're doing this project, adopting into the ESG area. With the same uh, philosophy and the uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, expert, uh, as, uh, with the same concept for the city of Shenzhen, another one project also are very similar. We helping the, the Shenzhen, city of Shenzhen to, be, to build the uh, smart transport, smart traffic system, to using the AI technology to control all the light signals. Um, a city more than 10 million people, similar like uh, in Moscow, I think uh, the traffic jams always a big problems. 
after the inputs of the AI technology into this uh, traffic light signal control system for the Shenzhen, overall the traffic time for every passenger every day they saving 15 minutes, saving 15 minutes. That's actually will give a very positive uh, impact on the uh, CO2 emission reducing, CO2 emission reducing. So. Um, another thing I think very important here, I want to at the same time mention, is uh, the cloud technology. And as what I said, the AI technology is going towards the direction more and more inclusive, more and more um, providing, providing. So, um, but uh, however, if every normal citizen and enterprise want to easily access to the AI, I think the cloud is, is a play a very important role here. Uh, recently, we together with the uh, Cloud Bank, actually, as, as, as with Cloud, uh, recently we together with the Spur Bank, actually, we already helped uh, to moving more than 45 AI technology features and services, cloud service, into the uh, the, the cloud, uh, into the Spur Bank cloud, into Spur Cloud Advantage. So I think this is also good news for for a uh, lot of the uh, daily uh, life uh, for Russian citizens and the Russian enterprises. Um, you just mentioned also the, uh, the, the new energy sectors, intelligent energy system sectors. I also want to share some of the updates in these areas, which is very close to uh, ESG field, I think. Um, you know, Huawei is a company for a very long time always trying to enable the digital capability to all different uh, companies, different uh, enterprises. Um, the photovoltaic technology, the PV technology, being in, in, the, in the market for already decades. This is a very mutual technology. However, we, what are we trying to do is we're we trying to integrate the IT and uh, AI technology together with uh, the, uh, the, PH, uh, the, the PV technologies to maximize the efficiency maximize efficiency through the AI. Also, there's few very important components. One is called uh, 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 the PV converter. One is called PV converter. And to do that, to even the efficiency improve during the whole PV power generation uh, processing, probably only one or two percent. But this is a, helps a lot on the CO2 emissions as well, saving a lot of the carbons as well. And uh, from year 2013 to year 2020, globally, actually, we using this technology deployed more than 300 billion kilowatts, the, the, the power being generated under these new systems, on these new systems. Also, with the same concept, we also trying to use in a lot of our existing product and the solutions. We know uh, data center now is a very big uh, the, the power consumption, and there's a, the statistic saying that the total data center consume around 1.5 percent of global power consumption. So this is a huge number. This is a huge number, and within the whole data center, the cooling system is the key part where the using the most of the powers, and therefore actually there's another good solution. It's called the eye cooling solution. Where we designed, uh, where we also developed uh, uh, a while ago, and now deployed into the new data center, we're using this system just for Huawei ourselves. Every year, we can save about uh, 27 million kilowatts powers, 27 million kilowatts power, which almost equal to 13,000 tons of the uh, carbon, 13,000 tons of carbons. I think you also asked me the. There's something regarding with AI or ESG um, for Russia, for, for Russia in this country. I think, from my view, observing the development of the AI technology also on the ESG field for uh, years in China and in Asian countries, I think uh, talent always most important things. And um, uh, for Huawei, we've been in this market uh, over 20 years times. Also, we believe in Russia, for Russia. And we also introduced the list of the talent programs and in also included the ICT competitions together with our local partners to launch a uh, few years already in this market. And in the future, we also wish to do more in these areas. Thank you. Thank you very much for
problems. Thank you very much for that inspiring story of your experience. And yeah, we are now we know that we can fight traffic in Moscow. So just a brief break for our speakers. Let's check the results of the online voting of our audience. Please let us see the results on the screen. Let me remind you, the question was, what do you think is the main challenge with artificial intelligence implementation in business? And the number one answer is corporate culture immaturity. 27.6% of the audience thinks so. Second place is shared between two factors, difficulty of business task definition and lack of skilled talent. Who ranks the third? Missing or poor quality data ranks third. And the least important factor, problems with technical infrastructure, 13.8%. And actually, technical infrastructure was one of the most important issues mentioned by Anton. So we see that these results are in line with the, most of the global polls and surveys. Immaturity of corporate culture, complexity of business talks, tasks, lack of talents, we know that everything actually boils down to people and to talents. Nice uh, to know that our results are in line with the results of global polls. Olga, let's move to you. I will just remind our audience that your company focuses on uh, producing self-driving transport for agriculture. And we heard, and me, myself, I even saw the flagship product Cognitive Agropilot, which is a self-driving vehicle for harvesting. Naturally, it's AI related. It can be used to raise efficiency, to cut costs, of course, but ESG targets can be achieved with this as well. Can you tell us how? Well, first, I would like to show you the video for everyone to feel we are really in the future now. We're living in the future. So you see the pictures and I will talk simultaneously as you watch the video. Almost 1000 harvesting machines all over the world were powered by artificial intelligence. Well, we think this is the reality now, but it's actually just the first year that we face it. True, we're getting used to it quite quickly. Last year, we thought that crops are the second oil, but now we say that crop is number one and oil is number two. So you see this swift change in the global situation. It's a critical change, actually, and we need to fully understand and accept it. Due to these changes, agriculture is changing rapidly as well. And now it's at the cutting edge, at the forefront. We know that famine is one of the key problems now. It really became the focus during the years of the pandemic. 800 million people in the modern world experience hunger. Naturally, this impacts all the spheres of our life. And the pace is so quick that we simply have no time to dispose of waste. We have no time to create the solutions we need. And this is a revolution. This disruptive technology is not a technocratic game, so to say. It's a system we need to survive. Otherwise, we will not survive at all. 
So when we talk about agriculture in general and all its aspects, it's actually all ESG related. So because it's about social aspects, about environmental aspects, and the state has a role to play here. So now we can only survive if we go to move from not smart agriculture to smart agriculture. And uh, now robotics contribute to agriculture a lot. Let's see the results, the impact that it has on agriculture. I don't think it's the most important factor in ESG, but an uh, important factor. So the first impact is decreasing fuel consumption. Robots have optimal speed. There are no rapid changes in fuel consumption. So this is beneficial for farmers, for businessmen, because, you know, fuel is increasingly growing in price. And it is also related to carbon footprint. But I reiterate, it's not the most important goal in terms of ESG. Social factor is the most important. But before that, let's speak about climate. Human beings biologically cannot work in any climate. There are big territories in Russia, for example, a large territory. It's a benefit, but it's a challenge also. It provokes challenges in agriculture, so certain territories cannot be benefited from. There cannot be a proper economic model there because human beings will suffer there. But thanks to our cognitive pilot technology that are actually now in Siberia and in the Far East, they mitigate these issues. Before, both Siberia and the Far East didn't focus on agriculture because it seemed so difficult. But if we talk about carbon balance now, crops are more, are more important in terms of positive impact on the environment, even than forests. It, it impacts, its impact is more than 60% more than that of forests, just because it is growing so quickly. If we're talking about harvesting, how can we do that, either by human beings themselves or with robots? Think of a tractor. A tractor is going through the field, and on its track, nothing can grow anymore, because imagine, it's big, it's heavy, and nothing can grow beneath it. So we need artificial intelligence, smart solutions to come up with smart tracks for tractors. And one of the key aspects in all the reports presented by all our colleagues, and I was glad to hear to them by the to hear them by the way. I believe there are two different worlds, the world of reporting and the world of real human beings. ESG now is in the world of reporting. People do not believe in it. And the key problem, look, a businessman take a sarcastic approach sometimes. They do not understand it. And the more real, hands-on examples we have, the better we will do. The key factor here is trust. Of course, data is important. But we talked about data a lot, but we didn't talk about trust. And trust was not one of the possible answers in our poll. But if you talk to people face to face, they will tell you that trust is something that they lack. 
If people do not believe in it, technology will not work anyway. People need to get engaged. So agriculture, agriculture here plays an important role. Caring about environment and gaining profit at the same time is a great example that will shape trust. Finally, we will reach a critical mass of people that will trust and will lead us to the future. Olga, listening to you, I come up with a business plan of, you know, solutions that will help us to fight climate change. What you are talking about now is actually reflecting the situation with our negotiations with Sakhalin. There, we are working on a great pilot project. And you see, we are discussing we are discussing things today, we will discuss them tomorrow, and we have we discussed them yesterday. This means that this is an important trend. But time flies, and uh, it is all changing now. The key focus is to survive. But to survive, we need to trust. We need to coordinate our positions. We need to reconcile our positions and to make use of the cutting-edge technology to optimize our life and the life of future generations. Thank you very much. Yeah, actually, the time is flying, and the time of our discussion is flying as well. So just a short question to each of the speakers. Let's talk a bit about the future. Think of any AI-related service connected to ESG, of course, that you dream of. Is there any solution that you dream of, both in AI and ESG? Mr. Joe, let's start with you. Let me answer the question in this way. Um, we always believe the future world is a world for perception, for interconnection, also for intelligence. And uh, Huawei, we wish to bring digital to every person, home, and organization to build a fully connected, also intelligent world. Anton. That's not exactly, that's not the exact answer, but thank you for that. Mr. Helper, take the floor. So, yeah, any solution connected to ESG and AI? I actually think um, making individuals understand on a daily basis on their um, sustainability footprint will be a difference where technology should be a key or so my dream would be that I have something which is monitoring my personal footprint because I think that's most probably the most powerful way to make society happen. I don't think our executives are cynical at this stage and not interested to tackle the challenge of uh, sustainability and ESG. I just feel uh, we all need to stand together united and help the poor and the less technology developed areas and spaces and countries and societies. And that's the mission we all have across the planet. So empowering everybody through tech, measure his footprint or her footprint. That would be a dream I have. And that's for sure something AI would be needed very, very much. I'm actually sharing your dream. Thank you very much. Maybe Huawei will also think about solutions in this regard. Unfortunately, one of our speakers 
left, he thanks all the speakers for the uh, reports. Olga, so what's your solution? It may be a childish dream. We always talk about smart solutions, about uh, robotics introduced in agriculture. We think about self-driving, smart, safe vehicles, transport. But if we really think of what we're dreaming about, I am dreaming about all people understanding that artificial intelligence is uh, something that can understand, can help us understand the language of nature, the language of plants and trees and flowers. Maybe with AI we can interpret the signals and the language of plants and animals. This sounds more like Peter Pan's dream, doesn't it? But that's curious anyway. Thank you. I think most of you agree in your dreams. People need to understand the changes. They need to move in the direction of sustainable development. It's not just words. It needs to become an action. So, once again, I would like to thank the speakers for the discussion and the audience of our translation who participated in our polls. And I would like to finalize with Albert Einstein's quote. Human nature must be more important than technology. Thank you very much for participating.